It clicks. It clicks. What clicks? The Eversharp Schick Injector Razor, made by Eversharp. Manufacturers of Eversharp Schick Injector Razors and Blades and famous Eversharp Precision Writing Instruments. Hideous things come out of the darkness to prowl the tortured earth. Evil hands stretch forth to seize. Evil eyes are watching. Unholy voices whisper and quarrel in the fearful silence. Death stalks. Loathsome, horrible death. Dare you put out your lights and listen to Boris Karloff in a story of horror in the deepening darkness? Dare you listen to... Lights out! I'm glad you brought up the question of ethics, Ed. Sometimes I think science is too ethical. Stands in the way of research. Mm, I don't know, David. Take your work, for example. It's wonderful, but you have to be very cautious. I think working with monkeys is about as far as you should go right now. Oh, but, Ed, David is past that stage. Why not show Ed the one you worked on today, darling? If you'd like to see it, Ed, it's right in the lab. Yes, I would. I saw it last night after you injected the poison. Uh, I'll get it, David. Thank you, dear. It's in the second cage. Mm, Ruth's a wonderful girl, David. Must be a big help to you in your work. Don't know what I'd do without her. But if she ever gets too interested in pure science, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to lock her out of the lab and just make her go back to being a wife. <laughs> How do you find time for a wife? Now, look here. All you practicing surgeons think the research man is a machine. Not me, Ed. Ruth means more to me than all the discoveries I might make. Her happiness is all I live and work for. Well, I can't say that I blame him. She's a very charming person. Ah, here he is. Same one you saw last night, Ed. Stone dead. And there he is, just as healthy and alive as any other monkey. Why, it's amazing, David. Naturally, I've followed all the experiments along this line, but you seem to have progressed much farther. David can't go any farther with animals. He's ready for the next step, and he can do it. Well, I'm all for research, David. But you have a moral obligation in this sort of thing. How do you know it'll work with human beings? Oh, you're a surgeon yourself, Ed. You know that human beings are animals just like all the subjects I've used. I know it'll work. Well, knowing it won't get you far with society. When death is robbed of his property, only bad stuff can happen. This Arch Obler radio drama is one possible scenario. The idea is you don't screw with death. Death doesn't mess around. I don't care if you're a Christian or a Jew, Protestant or Catholic. As soon as death gets the okay from Father Time, death is the head honcho, the big cheese. In fact, there's a whole mess of gods in an entirely messed up bureaucracy that you just don't want to get into. It's best to pretend that there's just one god, no middleman, or at the very least just a trinity. You know, good, evil, and in between. The ego, the id, and the reactive mind or something like that. The dog, the cat, and the mouse. But the world is really a busy, busy place filled with all manner of invisible souls and spirits clogging the air. You gotta wonder if that's why you cough so much. Your room, the room you're sitting in now, is absolutely packed with the souls of the dearly departed, and fairly 80% of them are disturbed. The other 20% were just stupid and figured being a ghost was just fine and dandy with them. They have no imagination. So like, 80% of these ghosts are shouting at you and the rest are praying and you just can't hear them. Nope. None of those scary sounds you hear are even ghosts at all. You've got mice and insects running around everywhere. And they're much more dangerous for you than some souls packing the air between your face and the computer.
Satan is a monster. His thirst for chocolate is insatiable. He will roam the entire earth, and if his evil scheme is carried out, there will be no chocolate for anybody. Seventy million years ago, the creatures known as dinosaurs mysteriously disappeared from the planet Earth. It was thought that they would never be seen again. But in the year 2000, the people of Earth were amazed and terrified by the greatest catastrophe ever known to mankind, the reappearance of the dinosaurs. Once upon a time, there were ten little cannibals swinging on a vine. One tried to pat a big wild cat, and then there were nine. One of the nine drank turpentine, and then there were eight. Then one more fell dead on the floor, and seven was their fate. One went in politics, then there were only six. One took a dive, now five we see. One went to Singapore, then there were only four. One turned green, and then there were three. One fell into some blue, then there were only two. They drank from a loving cup. One became a skeleton, then there was only one. And he ate himself all up. Then, of course, there were none. Now let's do it again and sing the answers. Let's sing along with this cannibal song. Once upon a time, there were ten little cannibals swinging on a vine. One tried to pat a big wild cat. And then there were nine. Ah, gosh, trying to pat a wild cat. One of the nine drank turpentine. Then there were eight. Then one more fell dead on the floor, and seven was their fate. We're certainly subtracting cannibals in a hurry. One went in politics. Then there was only six. One took a dive. Now five, we see. One went to Singapore. Then there were only four. One turned green. Then there were three. One fell into some blue. Then there were only two. They drank from a loving cup. One became a skeleton. Then there was only one. And he ate himself all up. <laughs> what a silly thing to do. You'll have to submit proof. I know that. And I've tried every way I can think of to get a human being to demonstrate on. He's tried insane asylums, penitentiaries, everywhere. No one will listen to me. Well, in a way, you can't blame him. Even to me, with my training, the idea seems, well, blasphemous. My dear Ed, you can't stop scientific progress because of a so-called moral concept. Besides, what could be less blasphemous than a triumph over death? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't see it that way. I wouldn't want to try it on me. When I'm dead, I want to stay dead. Oh, that foolish Ed. If I die first, I want David to use me for a subject. Ruth, don't look so startled, Ed. She's always been my strongest supporter. But I'm not going to use her as a subject. I like her too well as a wife. <laughs> Still, it gives me the shivers to hear you talk that way, Ruth. Well, why? I've seen David's work grow to where the technique is perfect. Before long, his experiments will be recognized by the whole medical world. And if I can help him achieve that goal, I'm willing to do anything. Living or dead. I mean it. said she wanted to do it, Ed, living or dead. David, you're surely not going to hold her to that. Not now. Of course I am. She meant it. But... I called you over here tonight, Ed, because I need help. Don't tell me that... That I want you to help me bring Ruth's... To bring her here? That's exactly what I mean. David... Will you help me? Or must I bribe some stranger? 
David, why don't you give this thing up? It's it's inhuman. Ed, if I succeed, I'll have Ruth back. Don't you see how much it means? Well, yes, if you're successful. Oh, I've no doubt about that. Look, I've got my laboratory record. 714 times I've performed the experiment on guinea pigs, rabbits, monkeys. 714 times it's been successful. Don't you see? But, David, this is no laboratory experiment. Ruth was your wife. She is my wife. The only woman I ever loved. That's why I want to bring her back here and start her breathing and living again. There's an ugly name for what you're asking me to do, David. I know. Grave robbery. But there's a better name for it, Ed. Death robbery. We'll rob old man death. intact and working. It's as good a theory as any other to explain what's happened. Birth of jazz you hear 
And where there is a little jazz, you always find me near. For I'm a jazz vampire. Shake a foot, shake a foot, shake a foot with me and dance, dance. Dancing is my specialty. Wise men keep out of my way. They know I lead them astray. They fall the minute I sway. I insist you can't resist a jazz vampire. Take a tip, take a tip, take a tip from me, for I am all the evil music has. Went down to the river, stood on the bank, shook my shoulders and the folks all sang. For I'm the meanest kind of jazz vampire. I'm a wicked vampire of the jazz. Get up in the morning and I make the coffee roll. Ham and eggs turn over, put the crawlers in a hole. Get up on a trolley car, the car begins to sway. Sit up on a half a dozen laps to start the day. I walk into the office and I greet the daughter there. Six or seven elevators go up in the air. Sit down at my Remington and simple paper keys. The fellow by the water stand gets water on the knees. The boss takes a letter. Dear sir, I'd like to say the man who gets the letter has to stop and hesitate. And when the day is over and the sun sets in the west, Say I'm the only little bird who doesn't go to rest, for I'm a jazz vampire. Take a tip, take a tip, take a tip from me, for I am all the evil music has. I stood by the ocean, no one around, shook my shoulders and the sun went down, for I'm the meanest kind of jazz vampire. Kick the door shut. Uh, on the operating table. I must say you are completely equipped. It's surgery, just as well as a lab. Everything we need is here. There. Well, it's done. Not yet. You mean you want me to stay? Ed, listen. Ever since Ruth... Well, I guess I've leaned on you for everything. I won't ask you to stay, but I do need you. Just a little longer. All right, David. I'll stay. Ruth will be the first to thank you when we succeed. David, I'll always doubt this until I see Ruth living, breathing, smiling again. It won't be long. Just a matter of 15 or 20 minutes. If nothing happens. What will you do if your operation doesn't work? Then you'll have just one more job to do as my friend. And that? will be to bury both of us. Oh, now look, David. If Ruth isn't alive again within a few minutes, I'll have lost her forever. And I'll have proved that my whole life's work is useless. I'll have reason enough to use any of a dozen tricks that any good surgeon knows. End the whole business. Oh, but don't look so horrified, Ed. We won't fail. Let's begin. I should remind you once more, David, that you're usurping powers that belong to God Almighty. I like to think that Providence has wisely held back the knowledge of things like this until we knew how to use them. And I know how. Hand me that large beaker. All right. I'm not going to back out on you, David. What shall I do? Do. You'll work as you haven't worked in surgery before. Thank heavens I've got your skill on my side. Now then, first strap the bigger manometer on her arm. I just happen to think of something. Keep moving. This is all a matter of timing. Yeah, but, David... Here are your instruments. And I want the incision right here where I'm shaving the hair. Make a small incision just at the fontanelle while I prepare the solution. David, have you considered... Please work fast. But Dave, what? She was embalmed, you know. Of course I know that. I have something to replace the blood and, and counteract the fluid. It's ghastly. Finish the cut. I know what I'm doing. 
Well, that's all for the incision, but after all... That worked nice. Now cut away the dura mater. Entirely? Leave the brain exposed? Yes, yes, I'll fix that. I've done it 700 odd times. This is no guinea pig or monkey. Well, I hardly need reminding. Sorry. What's that? A compound I've synthesized myself. What is it? I call it digamma paradiamine. Oh, I know that isn't chemically correct. But it's as close as I can get to it. nightly jamborees. There's ghosts with horns and saucer eyes, and some with fangs about this size. Some short and fat, some tall and thin. Some don't even bother to wear their skin. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, brother, it's a frightful sight to see what goes on in the night. Midnight jamboree They break it up with fiendish glee Ghosts are bad But the one that's cursed Is the headless horseman He's the worst When he goes a-jogging Across the land Holding a noggin in his hand Demons take one Look and groan And hit the road for parts unknown And there's no wraith Like a spooky spurn they don't like him and he's really burnt He swears to the longest day he's dead He'll show them that he can get ahead Lock the doors Unless you're careful He'll get yours Don't think he'll hesitate a bit Cause he'll clip your top If it'll fit And he likes them little Likes them big Part in the middle Or a wig Black or white Or even red The headless horseman Needs a head With a hip hip And a clippity clop He's out looking for a so don't stop to figure out a plan You can't reason with a headless man So after dark, you can't be good Stay at home the way that you should Cause right outside and waiting there Is the headless horseman Beware I'm getting out of here. I knew that something like it must exist. It took three years to track it down. It took me that long to make the first drop of it. Well, you know what you're doing, all right? Yes, I do. Now then, if you're finished, take the leads from that storage battery there and attach the positive to the silver plate on the shelf. Put that at her feet. I feel as if I were doing something unholy. Place the tip of the negative in the incision you made in the skull. Be sure the tip of the wire actually... Actually penetrates the pyre martyr. David, what if you bring her back? I will bring her back. But what if you bring her back and find she comes back without her soul? What? 
A soul? Yes. You're a surgeon, and you believe in a soul? Well, I hesitate to say there is no such thing. You've seen a good many deaths, haven't you? Have you ever seen any evidence that the soul escapes at death? Perhaps I couldn't recognize the evidence. Let's put it this way, then. If there is any soul, it either leaves the body or stays with it at death. Now, no reputable surgeon or physician has ever been able to report the slightest evidence of the soul's having left the body. So, the soul, if there is a soul, must stay with the body, a part of it. I'm ready now. If you've finished. Everything's set. Good. Close that switch, then, at the battery. Watch the meter and keep the current between plus and minus five of 150. There's a rheostat on the edge of the table. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to inject 10 cc's of adrenaline in the brachial artery. Adrenaline? Adrenaline and something else. There. God, she's beautiful, Ed. Yes. She was. She is. You'll see her in a few minutes, just as she was. I wonder what you'll have to tell us. Nothing. Death is only a transcendental sleep. Do you really believe that, Dick? Oh, well, what's the difference? How's the current? Let's see. What? Let's jump to 180. Good. Bring it back to 150. That's the result of the injection. On a dead body? <clears throat> Let's say suspended animation. There are still a few things in surgery you don't know, aren't there? I never dreamed of a reaction like that. I'll show you more. Help me swing this lamp over here. But... Let the ammeter go. It'll hold steady for a minute now. But it might jump again. No, it won't. I've been all through this before. The reactions are exactly the same as the others. And this lamp? X-rays? No, it's a modification of the cathode ray. And just another of my developments. I call these are theta rays. Well, why do you call them that? Well, most rays are named for the first few letters in the Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta, gamma, and so on. Well, that explains theta. Didn't you say a theta? Yes. Listen to him. 
All of the Earth's monsters have been collected and are living together in a place called Monsterland. My soul is an enchanted boat, which like a sleeping swan doth float upon the silver waves of thy sweet singing. And thine doth like an angel sit beside a helm conducting it, whilst all the winds with melody are ringing. It seems to float ever, forever upon that many winding river between mountains, woods, abysses, a paradise of wildernesses. Till like one in slumber bound, born to the ocean, I float down around into a sea profound of ever-spreading sound. Meanwhile thy spirit lifts its pinions in music's most serene dominions, catching the winds that fan that happy heaven. And we sail on, away, afar, without a course, without a star, but by the instinct of sweet music driven till through Elysian garden islets, by thee most beautiful of pilots, when never mortal pinnace glided, the boat of my desire is guided, realms where the air we breathe is love, which in the winds and on the waves doth move, harmonizing this earth with what we feel above. We have passed ages' icy caves, and manhood's dark and tossing waves, and youth's smooth ocean smiling to betray. Beyond the glassy gulfs we flee of shadowed peopled infancy through death and birth to a diviner day, a paradise of vaulted bowers lit by downward gazing flowers and watery paths that wind between wildernesses calm and green peopled by shapes too bright to see and rest having beheld somewhat like thee which walk upon the sea and chant melodiously. But theta was called the letter of death by the ancient Greeks. Well, that's right. It was the first letter in the word Thanatos. Death. Yeah, I see. A theta without death. <laughs> Maybe I was too sentimental. Maybe. At least human for once. Let's not argue. Here goes the ray. Now, quickly. The solution. Inject it? No, pump it. I built this pump especially for it. There's the pump switch, Ed. Here? Yeah. Turn it on. And watch the air meter. Okay. It's jumping. How far? 155. Let it go. 160. 170. Hold it there. It'll stay there now. Listen carefully. Yes. As soon as I turn off the pump, I want spigma readings. But there won't be any blood pressure. Wait and see. Give me a reading each time I ask for it and take them carefully. Are you ready? Oh, this is fantastic. I'm ready. Okay. Reading. <laughs> Systolic zero. Diastolic zero. That's all right. It will take a few seconds. Now... 40. My God. Diastolic. Hurry. Zero. My orbit valve is still open. I'll turn off the ray. Reading. 48. Over 42. David. Not yet. Now the stopwatch. Seven seconds after I say go, I want the systolic. Now you have it? Right. Ready. Now, go. Sixty. Go. Just what it should be. Lord, help. 
Look at my hand. I don't wonder. Ruth, darling, just a few more minutes. All right, Ed. Now the ray again. We'll know the answer very soon. defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured. Second act of Lights Out, starring Boris Karloff, will follow in just a moment. But now, listen to the sweetest shaving song ever written. Push pull, click click. Change his blades that quick. Push pull, click click. With the ever sharp Schick injector razor, yes, it clicks for men everywhere. Because the ever sharp Schick injector razor is the world's one and only razor with the automatic blade changer. No blades to unwrap. Fingers never touch the blade. Just push-pull, click-click. And a keen new blade is automatically locked in correct shaving position instantly. It clicks because the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor makes shaving 50% faster, 100% safer, 200% smoother. Just try the Eversharp Schick Injector Razor for one week. See for yourself the difference. 
It's a $1.75 value. Special now, only $1.25, complete with 20 blades. For the shave of your life, the rest of your life, switch to an Eversharp Schick Injector Razor. Get yours tomorrow. Push-pull, click-click. Buy an Eversharp Schick. How long do you use the ray this time, David? Not long. Give me a reading. 68. Over 67. Now. 70. Diastolic. 68. Now. David. 118. 76. Close. Now. 120. That's it. 80. The stethoscope. Quick. Here. Listen. She's all right otherwise. As far as I can tell, her respiration's normal, pulse just a tiny bit fast, and the reflex is slow, but apparently all right. It's a 
face of all this. Do you realize that you've performed a miracle? A miracle? I've brought my wife back to me, as I promised her. It's, it's an unholy thing, but... But we've conquered death. Is that unholy? We have conquered death. May God forgive us. She'll only wait now. How long has she been asleep? Let me see. Eleven hours. She hasn't spoken at all? Not since that first scream, when she fell asleep. Have you given her anything? Just a few drops of brandy. Have you tried to wake her? No, but I think I'll try now. Oh, wait a minute before you do. Why? Well, I hate to keep harping on this business about a soul, David. I realize this is no place for a philosophic discussion. But I can't help wondering why Ruth screamed when she first came back to life. Oh, I think there's a logical explanation. After all, it must have been a physical shock. Well, that's true. It must also be true that there was a great mental shock involved. I think that's why she screamed, and I'm wondering whether there's been a permanent effect on her mind. Or, as I prefer to think of it, her soul. Oh, you're simply borrowing trouble, Ed. I've never seen any sign of permanent damage in my other experiments. Don't forget that Ruth was a human being. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to wait. You're, you're not afraid? Afraid? Of what? Ruth. Ruth. Wake up, darling. Ruth, dear. It's David speaking. Wake up, dearest. Ruth. Ruth. Look out. There, darling. No wonder it scared a poor girl. Ruth, it's, it's David, dear. I kept my promise and you're alive again. Oh, you're all right, honey. It's David. You're, 
Size now. No, I'll stay here with her. I'll stay while you go out and walk around a bit. You've been there with her since 8 o'clock last night without any let-up. Go on, I'll stay. Ed. I know, old boy. I'd give anything myself if we could undo what we've done, but... Ed, what could I do? Well, there may be something. Let's try an experiment when she wakes up. What kind of an experiment? Well, let's see if we can talk to her and get her to say anything.
le hibou y crie de toutes les branches pendées chauves-souris. Est-ce que tu as peur de cette nuit? Oh, madame, oui, 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 oui. C'est Halloween. Intelligence, maybe we can teach her, build up from a small fragment. Maybe it might work. I'm going to wake her up and try it. Well, not now. Why don't you take a walk? Relax a little and get something to eat while you're out. Eat, I can't eat. I'm going to wake her. Ruth. Ruth. David, why not let her sleep? Hello. She's waking Hello. up now. Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Are you waking up? Poor child. Poor child. There. She repeats after me. A little. Maybe it will work, Ed. Ruth. Ruth. David. Ruth. It works. Seems to. Ruth, say I want a glass of water. Seems to. <laughs> I want a glass of water. water. It's too long for her. Ruth. Say, Ruth. Ruth. Loves. Loves. David. David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. <laughs> it's working, maybe. But what is she thinking? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> Ruth, stop it. Stop it. Wait a minute, old man. Too much for you, tired as you are. Go on out and take a little walk, and I'll work with it for a while. Stop. Your nerves won't take Stop. much of this. Oh, I guess Stop. you're right, Ed. I can't Ruth think anymore. Loves I'll be right there. Fine, fine. Uh -huh. I'll take good care of her and see what I can find out. Be patient. Uh -huh. Don't worry. I will. And you get something to eat while you're out. All right, I'll try. Poor guy, this is really rough on him. Rough on him. <laughs> Ruth. Ruth. Oh, we're kidding ourselves. There's nothing there. She's a parrot. Ah. But never mind, Ruth. Ruth, put down that scalpel. Scalpel! <laughs> You'll hurt yourself. Ruth, stay away. <laughs> Don't put it down. Think of David. David! <laughs> <laughs> Ed, for God's sake, what happened? Ruth. Scalpel. I'll get something and fix you right up. Wait. No use. Now, look. Doctor. Artery. No hope. Ed. All right, Doctor. Your diagnosis is correct. A minute or two left. Ruth's hiding... When you were before Could look you in the eye You're just like an angel Your skin makes me cry You float like a feather In a beautiful world I wish I was special You're so fucking special But I'm a Body. 
whatever you want. You're so fucking special. I wish I was special. But I'm a I'm a widow. What the hell am I doing here? Belong here. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I don't You should not run away from home. I don't like home. Why, child? Because my stepfather tried to rape me and he's a werewolf. <laughs> Come out to play And then I thought I heard one say I've got you I'll keep you I'll always will Yeah <laughs> Oh now I got you Well I want you I'm gonna keep you Well I got you Well you know what That shot my great grandpa <laughs> I told you I Tomcat started a fight And this is the way it all did sound to me <laughs> Now you know I couldn't stand there I didn't like them cats, you should know that They like them ghosts either, so I looked down to my feet I said, Pete, now come on, do your duty, carry me home But that old ghost looked up to me and said Oh, now we got you I want you. I'm gonna keep you where I got you. For you the one the shot my great grandpa. <laughs> Soul, she'll kill you too. What have I done, Ed? Everything I've done is wrong. Wonderful technique, Doctor. Congratulations. What about soul? Ed. Ed.
Ruth. She's somewhere in the house. What if she gets out and a scalpel in her hands? There's been enough damage. Ruth! Ruth! <laughs> Basement. I'd better take a gun. busy in the lab. No. No, there's nothing new. Just an experiment. No. Like so many experiments, it, it just didn't work out. Y si te descuidas te sorprenderá De por dónde vas, ten cuidado al caminar Al corrible te saldrá y te hará gritar ¡Esto es Halloween! ¡Es terror! ¡Es nuestro fin! ¿Te asusté? ¡Así será! Una vez, otra vez, todo aquí es al revés Bajo la luna, la oscuridad Vamos a gritar, gritos hasta el fin Así es siempre Halloween ¡Soy el payaso que te hace llorar! Cuídame bien, te hace acordar. Yo soy aquel que no puedes ver. Yo entiendo que que se estremece. Yo soy la sombra que te inspira horror. Te hago soñar sueños de terror. Esto es Halloween, esto es Halloween. Halloween, 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 Halloween. Halloween. Presten todos mucha atención. Sin temor no habrá diversión. El terror es nuestro fin, así es siempre Halloween. Mi ciudad te fascinará, si te descuidas te sorprenderá. Si una cocha te encuentra y te atrapa, de un grito loco te dará un susto mortal. Esto es Halloween, gritos hasta el fin, vamos a clamar al señor de este lugar. Y el rey ya, gran rey de nuestra ciudad, todos te quieran el gran rey. Halloween, 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 Halloween,
I take care of the place while the master is away. We've received strange reports from Alpha Sector 3. Reliable witnesses there tell of monstrous red dogs ravaging the countryside as well as earthquakes and fires. Did you say these were reliable witnesses? C'était il y a longtemps, bien plus qu'il n'y paraît, au cœur d'un univers dont les enfants rêvaient. Et un jour arriva cette étrange aventure dans le monde des fêtes présentes et futures. Vous êtes-vous demandé d'où provenaient les fêtes Non Alors suivez-moi, voici l'entrée secrète. Sharp Shake has just presented Boris Karloff in the first of the new series of mystery and terror stories, Lights Out. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's story. But first, no matter what kind of razor you use now, here's a challenge. There's a better, easier, faster way to shave. Eversharp Schick Injector Razor has banished forever 90% of the nuisance that makes shaving such a chore. Ends nuisance number one, no time wasted. Eversharp Schick Injector Razor has been proved at least 50% faster. Ends nuisance number two, it's safer. Patented guard bar prevents skin irritation, even under nose. Eversharp Schick shaves clean and smooth without skin irritation. Ends nuisance number three, nothing to take apart or put together. World's easiest razor to clean. Just rinse, shake, put away. Ends nuisance number four, no blades to unwrap. Fingers never touch the blade. Just push-pull, click-click. 
because Eversharp shakes the world's one and only razor with the automatic blade changer that locks a keen new blade, the world's sharpest blade, in correct shaving position instantly. Yes, it's 50% faster, 100% safer, 200% smoother. So, for the world's quickest, easiest, cleanest shave, change to Eversharp Schick Injector Razor. It's a $1.75 value, but special now for only $1.25, complete with 20 blades. Buy yours tomorrow. Next week, Lights Out will bring you a story about the undead, the vampires who are doomed to wander alone through all eternity, seeking the blood of innocent ones. Be sure to listen next Wednesday night at this same time. Lights Out is produced and directed by Bill Lawrence. The script is by Paul Pierce and Willis Cooper. This is Ken Niles speaking for Eversharp, manufacturers of Eversharp Schick Injector razors and blades, and famous Eversharp Precision Writing Instruments. For birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, and business gifts, remember the best gift of all is an Eversharp CA pen. Buy yours tomorrow during the sensational Eversharp CA pen sale. Buy now and save as much as 60%. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. You know, I've always had a good rapport with ghosts. I don't bother them, and they don't bother me. Sometimes I get wankers in here, though. For instance, I was headed down the hall towards the bathroom to get ready for bed. There's a mirror in there that reflects the wall where Francois's computer is, and also the front picture window. This one ghost gets it in his head that I'm so high and mighty and skeptical and everything that he's going to go ahead and use the cross-reflection of the two mirrored sources in combination of a five-headed lamp that's sitting next to the desk to create an effect with my or his own shadow. I saw a shadow man walk right into my bedroom and then right out again. It didn't look like me as it was tall, thin, dark, and it flew. Unfortunately for the ghosts, I'm always one step ahead of them and then pretty quick at realizing the amazing effects in such a cramped little apartment. I'm also rather quick at blaming the daily hallucinations I experience on my diabetes. I feel a little out of equilibrium sometimes, and my vision occasionally gets blurry. Also, I have been known, for what is known by normals at least, to have an overactive imagination. I just happen to also know the difference between what I imagine and what is real. And in reality, the thousands of ghosts that live here can't do anything, can't interact with the environment in any way. So that is why, my friends, that even though the ghosts are all over the damn place in here, I don't believe in them one little bit.